Welcome, Ricky. <laughs> <laughs> welcome, welcome to the Horrorcon YouTube Thanks, channel. Thank you, thank you, man. This is our first, this is like our first outing on the whole channel, like. So, thank you very much for joining us. And no, no problem, man. Um, how are you? You've been all right. Everything I'm, great? I'm good, man. I'm, I'm, I'm digging Birmingham. I'm yeah. digging this con. Um, yeah, man. I'm, I'm good. I'm, I always try to be good. Yeah. I don't think there's any, uh, any gain in being bad. No, no. Horrorcon's been good for you though. It, the been con good. itself, yeah. The con itself has been excellent, man. Oh, yeah, I've had brilliant. a blast. I would, I'm, I'm hoping to come back next year and maybe do Liverpool and maybe do Ed Edinburgh, yeah, which would be nice. But yeah, I've had a blast. Birmingham. I, I did do the London con two years ago yeah. for the Back to the Future reunion. Okay. And um, I got to tell you, man, Birmingham's. <laughs> I like Birmingham. Yeah, yeah. I love London too. Don't get me wrong. But yeah. Birmingham's a lot of fun, man. Yeah. So, uh, before landing your role on Freddy's Dead, did you um, watch any other horror films? No. The, no? The, the only horror film I ever saw was Exorcist, and it, and it scared me so bad that I never, I never saw, I never wanted to watch another one. Yeah. Like, like just freaked me out. I, yeah. I think I was too young to watch it at that time. Bad mothering. <laughs> um, <laughs> Mom! <laughs> but, um, yeah, it just freaked me out. Yeah, no, I didn't, you know, it's funny, because I didn't really know the franchise when, when I read for it. Um, I didn't know who Freddy Krueger was, and I, and I, you know, I felt, I, I feel bad about it now, but I did go back and watch everything, and yeah. once I got the role and watched all the films, because I wanted to know what it was all about. And I, I, I loved it. I, I was like, I became a fan myself at that yeah. point. And then I was like, holy crap, I'm, I get to do this. Yeah. <laughs> you know? I get to work with, I get to work with Robert England. Um, but yeah, yeah, it was cool, man. I, I'm, I'm, it's, a, it's an iconic franchise, man. I'm, I'm really proud to be part of it. I'm proud to be Freddie's favorite kill too, which yeah, is kind of cool. That is. Yeah. I mean, I like, the, I like your kill. We'll get on to that a bit further. Okay, cool. Interview. Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, you played the role of Carlos. Um, what was the challenges? For that role that you found, you know. Um, you know, it's funny because we just did a panel and I was kind of explaining that. Um, you know, I they brought me in for John to play the lead. Oh. Um, they wanted me to play John. Okay. And um, I read the script and I just, you know, there was just something about Carlos that I got that I understood. Yeah. And I really felt like I, I could really bring Carlos's story to the screen. That's what I wanted to do. And I remember going in and meeting with them and... And I said, listen, I've read the script, and I really, I really want to play Carlos. And they were like, he dies first. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> I, I know, I know, I get it. He dies yeah. first. He's not the lead. I get it. I said, but there's just something about him that I understood. Yeah. Um, coming from, you know, the streets myself when I was younger and, and, and going through some things. And um, I just saw that character, and, and he was who I wanted to play. Yeah. So I went in and I read. Um, they said, well, well. Let, let's have you read for him. Let's see what happens. And I, I read the uh, Q-tip scene. Yeah. And I got done, and they were like, "Yep, okay, okay. you're Carlos." And I was like, <laughs> "Okay, cool." My management wasn't happy. They were just like, oh. "You just gave the lead up." I'm like, "I, I, you know, I don't care." But it went to a, a good friend of mine, Sean Greenblatt, yeah. and I, I thought he killed that role. And mm. um, we're still friends. And he's, uh, yeah, I thought, I thought he was perfect in it. So I didn't have a problem with that at all. So, what's the difference between preparing for a horror role than any other role uh, in the film For me, um, you know, it's it's strange because I, I never, I didn't, I didn't want to be an actor. Well, it's like as a child, I didn't go, oh, I'm, I want to yeah. be an actor. I, I'm, mm -hmm. uh, I'm a musician. I write music. That's that's kind of I wanted to be a rock star. That's what I wanted to do. And um, when I got to L.A. to do music, I just ended up. You know, kind of like being, I guess, like the old story, being discovered, sort of. Yeah. Um, and I, I never took any acting lessons. I didn't do that. So for me, and and I think this is why Carlos also. For me, I I want I want to be as real as I can. Yeah. I think I think, I you know, I'm not an actor. I'm 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 a storyteller. Yeah. If that makes any sense no, to you, that's how I yeah. feel about it. And so I can pull from experiences yeah. my life experiences when I was younger to you know there's two ways you can handle um, a, a abuse coming from a bad background coming yeah. from and a lot of us do it and you know we you can either let it get a hold of you and cry about it all the time and oh you know I was abused and I was hurt and I get it it hurts I've been there yeah. but you if you take it and use yeah. it and it's a, it you know it's kind of a character builder yeah. and i use those i can pull from those memories anytime i want yeah. and be real 
Like when I was doing the death scene, and we'll talk about that later, yeah. but the, the, the woman that was playing my mother looked just like my mom. Really? And when I was younger, my mother actually put a Q-tip in too far and my ear was bleeding and he's running down the street with me. And oh. so, so for me, I think that was part of the Carlos when I read it too and I went, oh, sh I've been there. Close to home. I've been there very close to home. But yeah. those are the roles I want to play. You know, I, I, I can step out of the box and play different things. Like yeah. I just did a short um, called Psychotherapy and I play a therapist, which is completely out of the box yeah. for me. Um, so I approach I approach all my roles that way where I, I just want to be real. I want it when you, when you, when you watch it, I want you to feel something. I want yeah. you to go, man, I, oh, wow, I felt that. Because I think for me, you know, William Defoe, uh, you know, uh, yeah. just, just some of the greatest actors out there, De Niro, yeah. you know, these were, these were, as a kid watching movies, these were my idols. And these yeah. were the guys, you know, De Niro can do a scene and not say a word. And you feel all it's of expression. it. expression. He just, he feel all of it. It's like yeah. a, uh, a casino where he was, you know, the guys came into the bar and he, he was telling everybody, look it, you don't spend any money, yeah. keep it low key, and in walks his crony with his girlfriend and, you know, brand new Cadillac and all of it. Yeah. And that scene where he's at the bar and he's he doesn't say a word and the way it was shot was brilliant too. He doesn't say a word, but he's just, you just know he's going, I'm gonna have to kill all you guys, that's yeah, it. Yeah. You're, you're dead after you walk outside. Yeah, yeah. But he didn't say it, it was all in here. And that, I think that's, that's kind of where I am at as an actor, yeah. you know. I, like I said, I want to be real, man. I want I want you guys to feel shit when I do it. So you'd like to work with De Niro or uh, and the rest of them? Would you like to work with people like De Niro and stuff like that? I would in the future if it ever come you, about. That that's that's like a. Are you kidding? I I don't even know if I'd be able to breathe if I got to really? work with De Niro. Yeah, man. I would. Of course, I, I I know I'd be there holding my own with him, but I just yeah, I would love to. De Niro, if you're out there, yeah. I want to come <laughs> work with you. Um, yeah, one of my idols for sure. Yeah. Um, and I make a good mook. Hey, hey, come on. Hey, 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 hey. what? You want, you, 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 am I funny to you? No. Joe Pesci, another freaking great. Oh, Joe great, Pesci. Great actor. You know, great yeah. actor. I mean, he's, you know, when you see Joe Pesci, you, you're scared. <laughs> like, for real. And it's like, it's like you said before, like being out of the box. I mean, look at Joe Pesci, Joe Pesci in, in Goodfellas, and then look at him in, in Lethal Weapon. Right. And you think to yourself, oh, hang on a minute. Yeah. You yeah, know, yeah. just so diverse. No, it's yeah. Absolutely and well, like, like, I played Carlos, and then in Back to the Future, I play this android, yeah. which was very cool. And so I, I like to, yeah, I'm a character guy. I'm a character actor. I, I, I play a lot of different things, and I, I really enjoy... Um, becoming those things and it's real for me so yeah. yeah it's cool man so what was your kind of first thoughts on seeing Robert in full character on set or the first time you caught eye yeah and no, it was frightening because I he the like I was saying in the panel the first the first scene we did I didn't see him at all mm. he didn't want he didn't want me to see him so I didn't get to see him until until he actually came out in the scene yeah and like I said we do blocking where um, you, you rehearse that you're gonna come in here and he's gonna come in here and all this stuff is gonna happen and then you do it. And so I'm coming in waiting, you know, knowing he's coming over here and he'd come over this way and scare the crap out of me. <laughs> so yeah, my first encounter with Robert was just, you know, I was, like I said, I was scared. It was, it was he yeah. was, he's such a good actor too. And, yeah. and, and I've learned a lot, I learned a lot watching him at a young, you know, when I was young doing this and, um, yeah, I, I, he scared the shit out of me. <laughs> what blew you away in terms of like set designs, makeup, you know, acting on set while you was there? What was the the? I'm sorry. Yeah. So what 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 kind of blew your mind with like what you saw on set, the, like even the makeup, set oh, design, or? I, I, well, the set. The, my set wasn't. It wasn't even really a set. It was. A, it was. It was in Pasadena, California. It was a real shut down. Um, Pacific Gas and Electric Company, mm -hmm. and it had, all of that was there. When you went in there, there were these, you know, the pipes were everywhere, it yeah. was dingy, it was cold, it was fuck, it was real, so yeah. that, there wasn't a set there, but yeah, I think on that film, Right on Elm Street, what, what blew my mind was the special effects, the, yeah. the work I had to do to um, get that done. Like when, when my head blows up, they had to do a whole body cast, and what they do is they, they take this, like, it's like, uh, the only way I can say it is if you've ever done the, you know, where you put the the stuff on the balloon and then you pop the balloon and it's, uh, oh, I can't yeah, remember yeah, what they call it. Mache. Paper mache. Yes, and that's yeah. basically what it's like. They dip this stuff and they wrap it around you and wrap it around you and then you have these little straws that stick <laughs> it, and that's the only way you can breathe. Mm. So you're completely encased in this thing. And I was just like, you know, 10 minutes I had to do that. And then you have oh. to do the, the expression, you know, yeah. and do that for 10 minutes. So that, I think the makeup was, was 
one of the hardest things because, like I said, Robert and I were the first ones there and the last ones to leave. Yeah. Because back then they were, you know, they were gluing this stuff on, and then so to get it off, they would have to take a little thing and use the acetone and a little thing and take the, you know, it took hours to even yeah. get the stuff off. So yeah, that was that was kind of. I think that's what kind of blew my mind is how, yeah. how they made it. And then uh, working with Robert, uh, I mean, with uh, John Buechler, who was the, the amazing special effects guy, um, we had to really work together because a lot of that stuff with the, the, the Q-tip and all that, yeah. it, it, there was a head there, but I was behind the head working my hands and doing all of this. And yeah. So he came, he came to me after the film and he says, you know, I just want to, I just want to thank you, man. He goes, you made my stuff look really good. Yeah. And he goes, it's, it's, there's not a lot of actors that can do that. Mm. And like, it still blows my mind. Yeah. Actors, who? Yeah. Oh, oh, shit, man. Okay, man. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. I still, I, man, I swear, I wake up every day still. And I, I say it all the time. I, I, I'm just, I, I feel so blessed that this is what I get to do this time around. Yeah. I mean, people come up to me like here at the convention and, you know, can I get your picture? And again, I'm like, oh, I'll oh, be. yeah, yeah. <laughs> of course you can. <laughs> yeah. It's just, I, I, I never used the word fans. I, I just, it was a word that I just kind of, I, I call them supporters because really, if, yeah. if you guys don't come and support what we do, come and watch my work. Then, then what am I doing? Yeah, exactly. You know, yeah. and that's what I do it for. And that's, you know, I don't get to come to a lot of conventions because I'm still working a lot. But um, when I do, that's the that's the best thing for me is to meet meet all my supporters and have them come up and tell me their stories and me be able to tell them stories. And yeah, yeah I, I, I really dig it. It's How really that cool. blows you away in a sense? It blows sense. me away yeah. I, all the time. Definitely. Like I have the hearing impaired that come up to me. Yeah. You know, and they were kids in school when that movie came out. And now they're adults, and they would come up and go, you know, you, you, I just want to thank you for changing my life. And I'm like, changing your life? I, I, I was killed by friends. Like, no, you made it cool. Yeah. Like, when that film came out, and I went back to school, I was cool. And that was the other thing, too, because playing Carlos, I didn't want to do the old scenario of, you know, the, the, the how the hearing impaired, you know, how you talk like that, you know. Yeah. I, I, I looked, I, I was talking to Rachel, and I was like, you know, I, I really don't want to do that. I yeah. want to make this, you know, because it just because you have some sort of impairment or some, you know, it doesn't make you stupid. It doesn't make you, you know, that you're not like anybody else. And and I wanted that to to be made clear. And that's Definitely. why I chose to speak speak right. And then when I pulled the ear out, yeah, complete silence. Yeah, I wanted him to be to people to go. It's cool. Yeah, it's okay because a lot of you know it's even even now. In our society, it's still out there. It is. You know the prejudice against anybody. Yeah. If you if you have a crooked tooth or you you know it's it's it. Any difference? We're, yeah. we're, look, man, we're all humans, man. Yeah. All on the same row. We're all on the same row. If I cut you, you're gonna bleed the same way I yeah, am, exactly, man. It's yeah. just it's it's the same color, and it's gonna be losing it, the blood at the same amount at the same time. Exactly. So I I'm I'm hoping that as a society we get past that, you know. We will we'll do. It. I think we will do in in futures. So. I got faith. Oh, well, we'll, 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 see. Yeah. we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. I do. So Behave that's... out there. <laughs> <laughs> so the ear, mate, the ear piece, that must have been really uncomfortable. And also, it was also pulsating at times. Um, yeah, like that. you know, a lot of that, again, John Buechler and yes, his team, so man, um, you you don't see it, but like when this whole thing is going on and it's doing this, yeah. there's, there's pumps that are in here that are covered up that go down my neck, down my leg, and over to here. And there's six guys behind me. Like giving all doing that, yeah. this stuff, you know, doing the pumping and, and and I'm working, I'm doing, you know, the working oh, of yeah. it. So yeah, it it not it wasn't uncomfortable. It was just it yeah, it was strange, you know, because like I said, as an actor, an actor, I I put myself there for real. Yeah. So. So you're in that situation. I'm in it at yeah. at that moment. I'm in there, and I have my get myself out for a second when I'm done, and then yeah. But like I said, because it had been done to me before, and it was kind of a sensitive thing, the hearing, and uh, yeah, it was it was it was strange. I mean, but, uh, watching your death scene, uh, I've watched it a few times now. It, it's kind of like you said, it's Freddie's favorite kill, and he looks like he really did have fun torturing your character I got, to then finally have his way. You know what? That's another another thing. Like we were in Pasadena, and there must have been I don't know three or four thousand people in the audience at our panel, and somebody stood up and said, "Hey, you know, who's your favorite kill?" <laughs> Robert's like, "Carlos, of course." 
Yeah. And I was kind of in shock because, I mean, he's killed a lot of people. Oh, yeah, he's going for it. And that was quite an honor for me. And, and, and I loved what he said about it because he said, you know, this was the ultimate kill for Freddie. Yeah. You know, uh, hearing impaired, he's, he's yeah. you know, torturing some poor guy that's already yeah. got things going on. So, that yeah, that was quite an honor. Thank you, Robert. I really dig that. Um, <laughs> and I'm proud, I'm proud of that. I think it's very cool. So what element of that death scene did you find that you, you loved was clever? In a sense, I mean, I love the fact that when the it was attached and he dropped the pins off the balcony, I thought that was absolutely that was brilliant. a tough scene too because I did I I I pretty much did all my own stunt work on that one, yeah. so I did all of that stuff and and the grates yeah. on the floor yeah they were real, and I had to do that scene probably to to catch that pin yeah. dropping when it came down, you know, and I'm rolling in and I drop yeah. down I probably did that we probably did that ten times. So and my knees were all yeah. chewed up, and you know. But I, at, like I said, at the point, I, I don't care about that. I'm, yeah. I'm gonna do what, what I can do, you know. So the, and then Rachel yeah. Talalay, an amazing director who I would love to work with again, Rachel. <laughs> um, yeah, she's super cool, and I'm, I'm, I'm so happy for her. You know, Doctor Who, and I mean, yeah. she's just working with Cumberbatch, and you know, uh, yeah, she's super cool. Um, could you see but, yourself yeah. in Doctor Who? Huh? Could you see yourself in Doctor Who? Of course. Yeah? Yeah. I think I'd be great in Doctor Who. Do you reckon you'd make a good doctor? Um, I think I'd be... I just played a therapist. I, yeah. I actually was very uh, impressed with myself yeah, doing well, yeah. that. <laughs> I was very... Yeah, yeah. I Like I said, I can I can really morph myself into anything, yeah. you know, yeah. mentally if I, I can do it. And then I'll do stuff that I'm not familiar with. I'll do my research. Yeah. And I'll really like look and see, and you know, I I'm that kind of guy. I'm not a method actor by any means, yeah. but I, it, I would if I had to play a doctor, I would go hang out at the hospital, nice, and just you know just watch or watch hospital shows, real stuff yeah. though, not 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 like written hospital shows, but you know, I, like I watch operations, and I yeah, I, I think yeah. I I think I think when I was a kid, that's kind of one of the things I did want to be was a doctor. Um, it fascinates me. I watch heart implants and knee surgeries, yeah. and my wife's well, always like, "Why are you watching us?" Like it's fascinating, you know. But yeah, I, I could see myself doing doing all kinds of great stuff. There's a lot of shows out there I'd love to be in. I think I'd be great on The Walking Dead, I, you know, because I I just. But it, it's all about getting into the reading or having a producer yeah, call you. Else, Walking Dead. I'm here. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. That's 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 pretty much that. It would be criminal not to touch on. Back to the Future really would be. Uh, it's one of my favourite franchises. Thanks, man. Um, that you know, what did kind of cherished moments do you take away from that moment that you know you was on that film? Wow, <clears throat> you know, again, there's two iconic franchises I've been able yeah. to be part of. But yeah, really, really, still blows my mind. But um, Back to the Future, man, it was. It, it, I, I went in, the, 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 the biggest thing I remember about Back to the Future, and I remember all of it, was, was going in for the reading, getting the actual job. Um, I think I, I was called back, I, it had to have been six or seven times. Call back, call back, go back in and read. Because they were trying to match the bad guys, uh, Jason Scott Lee and Darlene Vogel, yeah. who were amazing, both of them. They were matching them, and I remember the last time I went in, it was with them two. And I went into the reading, and I was—I had just happened to have the flu. I was sick as a dog, and I went in, and the casting director has a camera like this, and you do your stuff. And I remember reading the line, and I—I just—I don't know what came over me, and I was just like, "Look, man, Robert, man, just hire me or leave me alone. I'm not, I'm not you know, I'm not coming back." And and I got in my car, I got off the Universal back lot because it was at Amblin, uh, Steven Spielberg's place, and I didn't even get out the thing, and it was my phone rang, and it was Robert Zemeckis. Yeah. Come back, I want to talk to you. And I, he wasn't in the room when I read, and I went back, and we went in this big room, and he says, um, listen, are you are you afraid of flying? I said, the only thing I'm afraid of, dude, is not getting this job. I really yeah. want to do this. I'll, I'll fly. And he was talking about being able to fly to hoverboard stuff. And that's how I got that. So that memory for me. And then, you know, just memories with Michael, you know, who was Fantastic. a phenomenal actor. I was a huge Family Ties fan. I, I, I really loved Michael's work and I was really excited to be working with him. And then to get on the set and actually meet him and find out what a great human being the guy was. And, you know, we had fun. At, uh, the back lot at Universal, our trailers would face the LA River, which is kind of like a, it's just like a drainage thing. And across from that was a golf course. So Michael set up a, we would set up a little mat and we would hit balls across. <laughs> across the, we just had a blast, you know, it was, a, it was, a, it was a lot of fun. 
it was a long shoot because we did two and three back to back. Yeah. So we worked we worked for months and months, but and it, you know it was cool. And it paid off. I'm I'm proud. I'm proud to be part of that too. I really great am. Franchise. I really great, am. Great franchise. It's a great it's a great franchise, and you know Robert Zemeckis is you know probably one of my favorite directors. Robert, we just talked, I know, but I, come on, man. Yeah. I want to work with him again, too. <laughs> and it. Bob Gale's an amazing writer. And I, I, it was fun, because I think they got a lot of stuff right. It was really strange, because you got to remember, in 85, or 86, wherever it was, can't remember now, you know, the things we were doing, and two, yeah. weren't really here yet, like huh. talking on the screen. And, through, and we almost got the Cubs. Bob Gale almost yeah, got yeah, the freaking Cubbies right. One year. Right, yeah. One year. Yeah. It was so close. <laughs> I remember talking to him, because I talked to Bob, too, and we get to see each other, and I'm like, man, so close, man. It would have been, that would have been insane. <laughs> they, they won the next year over, which was still, still, the Cubbies won the World Series. What? But the sneakers, so, the sneakers, they're, they're yeah, the sneakers. They, they, yeah, the only thing they don't have is a hoverboard. We can get people, we can get like a Tesla up things up Tesla. <laughs> I love Elon Musk. Um, my son is a, it's his hero. Um, He's but yeah, I mean, we can get, we can get a Tesla up to Mars, but we can't make a hoverboard. It, it just, it blows my mind. As, you know, as part of the cast of Back to the Future, um, do you think it's right if it was kind of not remade, but yet they continued the story in some sense? You know what I've had I've had many conversations with with uh, Bob Gale about this and and there's 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 this that's never going to happen. It's just Bob is he's like that and and I I kind of agree with them, you know, why ruin a good thing? I think it's done. I mean, I uh, think I'm 3 is good. I think it's done and I I couldn't see anybody being McFly besides Michael J. Fox and and it's kind of like the question asked about about Freddy Krueger, you know, when uh, Earl did came in and played Freddy and and I love him. He's a great actor too, but there's only one Freddy Krueger, and that's yeah, Robert right. England. Yeah, you know, it, it's like I said. <laughs> it'd be like it'd be like dressing Santa Claus up as the Easter Bunny. Yeah. It's like <laughs> it's not something's work. not right here. Yeah, it is, yeah. <laughs> you wouldn't like it, no. Yeah. Um, well, that's all the time we've got. Thank okay. you very much. Awesome. Um, remember um, to like and subscribe. I'm blown away with the conversation. Thank, thanks thanks for coming on, on to the channel. No uh, remember to like and subscribe, people. Um, and yeah, keep on screen with us here at Horicon. Awesome. Thank you very much. Awesome. Hey, man, I appreciate you guys. So hit me up on my website. Go to rickydeanlogan.com. Check out what I'm doing. I got a lot of films coming out. I got music that I'm doing. Um, yeah, man, I just appreciate the support. I really do.